Uh, you know what we're gonna we got some announcements this uh, this evening. Want to remind you our regular services every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Every Sunday evening at 6. Also, every Wednesday we have our midweek Bible study at 7. Want to encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, you can always follow us on YouTube or Facebook. Amen. Uh, we have all of our sermons up there. You can always go back to the past year and see uh, all the different ones. Tonight we're going through the Book of Acts. You can actually go to YouTube. Uh, uh, just search at New Destiny uh, Rupa Valley. Amen. You can find us and you can go back and see the book of Acts all the way from uh, chapter 1 verse 1 and just follow it all the way through. Amen. It's a good, uh, it's a good, it's a good listening. Amen. Good uh, to watch. Amen. So we can get all the way through it. Amen. I uh, want to uh, remind you we have our Bible conference next uh, week. It is uh, April the 27th through the 30th. That's next Tuesday through Friday. Amen. It's going to be a blessing. Amen. So that means next Wednesday. Amen. Our service will be broadcasted from the uh, from the conference. Amen. Will not be here. Amen. Next Wednesday. Amen. Because it's a Bible conference. We do it every year. Amen. We missed last year because of the pandemic. So we're doing it this this year. It's going to be a good time. Amen. I've been talking to some of the people in El Centro, and they're excited uh, to have us down there. So you know, it's going to be a really good time. I want to remind you on next uh, a week from Sunday when we come back, May the second. We are going to have a guest preacher for that evening service. I want to encourage you to come. I want to encourage you to invite someone. Uh, it's going to be Pastor Larry Gregory, a man from uh, Lehigh Acres, uh, Florida. He, uh, he comes with a long resume, a man. He was a missionary in Fiji. Uh, he left a good work over there, uh, Pastor Raymond Redding. Amen. We know him because uh, he's been, Raymond Redding's been here. That's where we get the, Fiji, the Fijian flag from. Down the on the board, Amen. So you know what? Uh, I want to encourage you to be here May second uh, for our evening service. Make sure you invite someone to be a good time with Pastor Larry. Uh, also, looking ahead, July the eighth, I'm asking everybody who wants to go to try to let us know by May second, Amen. So we can uh, know what we're doing if we're flying, if we're driving, or however we're going to get there. But we are going to Wichita, Amen. For for Thursday the eighth through Sunday the eleventh. To go and uh, just go be part of what God's doing at the Wichita Church, Amen. Pastor Henry, Amen, is is a good he's a good man of God. He's 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 a, he's a good guy. I've known him for a very long time, uh, over twenty years, Amen. Going close to thirty years now, and uh, he's he's a great man of God. He's been doing a good work there. This is a rally, Amen. It's uh it's it's youth oriented, Amen. It's not for youth only, but it's youth oriented. A lot of youth go out there. A lot of lives are, are, are dedicated to God over this time. He does it every year, so I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Amen. So uh, these are all the announcements we have right now. Oh, wait, on uh, on May 3rd. So Sunday night, the 2nd, we're having uh, Pastor Larry Gregory here. On the next day, Monday, uh, we will be visiting our sister church in San Bernardino. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Go with us as we go and support our sister church. Amen. As Pastor Larry preaches there also. Amen. These are all the announcements. Amen. We're going to lift up an offering. Amen. So let's worship God as Russia comes forward. Amen. amen. You know what? This evening, amen. Uh, if you're watching online, amen. I want to encourage you with the service. If you're either you're watching it live or you're watching it at a later time because uh because of one one situation or another amen you know what don't let don't let the devil rob you you can still give amen we got the zell app the pop money app you can give online it's linked to the phone number on the screen 909-496-4594 allow god to bless you this evening amen so let's bow our hearts as brother jesse bless the gift of the giver heavenly father lord we give you thanks lord for all the blessings you pour upon us father god lord father god lord the opportunity to gather in your house Father God, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver, Lord. Lord, that your hand be upon the finances of your people and of the church, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, that you're the only and one that we should give to, Father God. Father God, Lord, these are willing hearts and obedient hearts. Giving back to you, Father God, Lord, what righteously belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve.
some some people they've already said they're going to be coming amen so you be a part of that amen uh they're going to come support us amen so you be here amen to uh to show them that you know what that we're still alive out here amen mm -hmm. amen so even those of you who are watching from home amen and i know with some, some of you watch from home because of work schedules and stuff like that uh do your best to be here on that day amen for that sunday evening Amen. As we uh, celebrate Jesus with our sister church, amen. Um, Real and Rialto, amen. Amen. So you know what? Uh, this uh, this evening we're going to continue our uh, our journey through the Book of Acts. Uh, we're in Acts chapter fourteen today, amen. We're making our way through it uh, pretty well. Um, uh, where, we're, where we're at now is, you know, uh, Paul and, and, and Barnabas have been sent out. Remember, they laid hands on them, and they sent them out to go out and minister. And they're going, and they're being, uh, they're, they're preaching the gospel. They're getting uh, persecuted, amen. People are coming against them. People are loving them, amen. And they get a, you get a mix of both, amen. It's kind of like the way it is. As you serve God, some people accept what you're doing. Some people don't. Some people want to hear, amen, the good news about Jesus Christ. Some people don't want to hear the good news about Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul, amen, and Barnabas are experiencing <coughs> as we read. And uh, they're, they're going into a, um, I Iconium, amen. So you know what, let's uh, pick it up on Acts chapter 14, beginning with verse 1. Acts 14, beginning with verse 1. Now what happened in Iconium? that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews. And so spoke that great multitudes, both Jews and of the Gentiles, believed. So remember in verse in, in chapter 13, Jews and Gentiles were both being converted and, and to, to, to Christianity. They were both coming to Jesus. So now they're in Iconium and they're they're speaking to the multitude and they're speaking in the synagogue and expressing how this is going, taking place in other places. Verse 2. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. There's always going to be somebody that ain't going to believe in you. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace and granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe cities of Laconia and they and to the surrounding region and they were preaching the gospel there so grab a picture of what's going on Barnabas and and and, and Paul they just get to Laconium and they're going into the synagogue to begin to minister now mind you Paul Paul was was walking into the synagogue because remember Paul was a Pharisee he was part of the the the, of the of the religious of the religious world prior to uh, his conversion from Saul to Paul, so he's over there and he's in his ministry, but he's he's not speaking of the of the traditional teachings that they used to teach. He's now teaching about the conversion of many people, how people are giving their lives to Jesus. Uh, he, he's letting them know that you know what uh, that in, in these other places we're coming from, there's people with both Jews and Gentiles, and that's important. Because it's, it's, it's basically saying both the rich and the poor are giving their lives to Jesus. And, 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 and he's, when he tells them that, he's actually bringing common ground to both Jews and Gentiles. And he's saying that, that, they're, that they're coming together. And so he's, they're in the synagogue and they're talking and they're teaching this. And they're, and they're letting everybody know that how, how lives are being changed. But the Bible says in verse 2, it says, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds. And what that means is that there was a there was a group that were in the crowd, they didn't want to believe. No, that, that, that's not happening. That life's not changed. No, that couldn't happen. A Jew never would have changed to Jesus Christ. That goes against our teachers. We won't believe that. 
It's 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 very common as, as you as you live for God and you begin to to tell people, you know. And I and I said this the other day. I said, you know what? You know, we 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 witness to our family and friends, and, and we want to say we're evangelistic and we're in the will of God. But you know, that's what we need to do. We should be doing that automatically. But sometimes our family and our friends don't want to hear it. I remember uh, when I first gave my life to God, and and I remember going to church. My wife and I, we come to the altar, we both get saved together, and we're crying, and we feel an overwhelming spirit of God upon us, and we know that there's a change, something's going on. And when we get home, amen, we're living at my parents, and, and I remember going to my mom's room and sitting on her bed and telling her, Mom, I gave my life to God, I gave my life to Jesus. I remember, because I remember expressing it with joy and excitement, and, and I remember mom, my mom telling me, well, that's good for you, man. She, she, she didn't want it. It was, no, that's good for you. That's not for me. That's for you. And we come across that, and that's what's going on. The, Jew, the Jews are, are stirring up and poisoning the minds of the, of, of, of the, of the Gentiles and saying, you know what, no, 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 this, is, this isn't going to do. Let's stop this before it goes on. And they begin, they begin to come together and, they, and to the point that they want to stone, amen, uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas. And that's where we leave off, amen. Any questions so far? Any, any, any input? So this, that's the picture. They're, they, they're, they're upset. They want to stone them. And, they're, and remember, they're not talking about, amen, the, the, they want to get them high and stoned, amen. They want to get rocks and beat them with it is what they want to do. They want to, they want to beat them down with it, okay? So that's where we're at. Verse 8. And in Lystra, a certain man who felt strength in his, in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently, means he was he was he was staring at, he was staring him down. He was like focused on him, and seeing that he had faith to be healed, he said with a loud voice, "Stand up, straight on your feet," and he leaped and walked. Now, when the people saw that. The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Now, now what, they're, what they're referencing them to is, is gods. They're referencing to them as other gods. That's what, that's what they're, they're talking about when they start calling them these names. And they're doing it in, their, in, a, in, a, in another language, in their, their native language. Verse 13, then the priest of Zeus then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice the price with the multitudes. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out. Now, now you hear them say this, they 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 they, they some, ver some versions say they rent their clothes, they tore their clothes. That's a sign of like frustration and anger. They're, they're just, ah, you know, like the, like, like the Hulk, you know, just ripping, them, ripping their clothes, okay? So that, that's what that is. It's a sign of anger and frustration. It says, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitudes, crying out and saying, men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you. And preached to you that you should turn from these, these useless things to the living God. Who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all the things that are in them. Who bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless he did not leave himself, did not leave himself without witness. In that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. So now they're there, and, and, and as as they're speaking with boldness about God, about Jesus, 
they began to, to call them by other gods' names. And they began to, to speak to them in this manner. And they're bringing a sacrifice to sacrifice them, to sac bring their sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. Imagine, imagine in the days of, of Moses when, when uh, every time Moses would go out to go spend time with God and, and, and pray and, and go, for, go for 40 days. And, 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 and when he would go, when he'd come back, they would build a golden calf. Remember, and you know, they would worship and they'd bring sacrifice to the golden calf. And remember um, Elijah when when uh, when when he goes against the the, the, the prophets of, of Baal, of Baal, and, and they're 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 mocking. He's mocking them. He says, "You know what? How about you you make a, a, a an altar and, and cut up the calf, and and I'll do the same thing. You cut the bull, I'll cut the bull, and." Whoever's God answers with fire and consumes it is a true God and begins to mock him because the sacrifice was what was important because that's what you give to God your very best. And at this time, they're already moving out of the sacrifice stages of life because Jesus Christ was the final sacrifice. So they're bringing the sacrifice. So Paul begins to, to cry out. He says he tears his clothes and he begins to tell him, what, 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 what on you guys? Don't you realize we're both human beings? We're both made from the same thing that God created us both? Don't do this. Don't be worshiping me. But the, but, but the Bible says that the crowd didn't. They weren't really paying that much attention to him. And they still brought the sacrifice to Paul. They were still bringing it to him. So, and I, 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 I believe the writer, he puts this in there to give us a, a, a picture. To give us a, 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 an understanding of what's really going on. About the, the mental state and capacity of the average person at this time. Because they see Paul, and all they see is, I'm hearing about God, this must be a God. Their mind was so far, their hearts were so far away from God, they no longer recognized God. And they began to come again, they began to, to, to sacrifice unto Paul because they're, they're, it was, uh, they, I, in order for me to serve God, I gotta see. Yeah. I must see. Paul, he speaks with boldness. Well, you know what? He must be God. We'll call him Hermes because he must be God. Now Hermes was a ruler. He was the, he was the ruler. And and so they begin to call him Hermes because because they believe that he must be Hermes. He must be God. That was the mental state. That was the mental capacity. Have you ever met people so bound in their religion? And, 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 and we come from the Latino background, so we always default to Catholicism. But it's not just Catholicism. There's a lot of religious backgrounds out there that, that people get so caught up in the religion of it or the tradition or routine of it that it becomes so great into who, who they are and their mental status, just like these people, their mental status of who God is, that they couldn't see beyond what their physical thought of what God is. I remember growing up, I was told I was a Catholic, but anytime I went to church, it was more of a Christian or Protestant church. We used to light, we used to light a candle of a saint in the house and had a black mark on our wall all the time, but nobody, but nobody could tell me who that was. The saint, the saint they used to have on there, I'm like, well, who is he? They said, well, that's the saint. Well, okay. Well, what do we do with him? Well, we pray to him. Okay, for what? Well, you pray to him that he'll tell Jesus. Well, why don't I just pray to Jesus? Amen. <laughs> and, and, and they would tell me, but but no, but that's what we do. But why don't I just pray to Jesus? No, you pray to him, and then he'll tell Jesus his mom, and then she, if Jesus isn't in time out, she'll tell Jesus. And that, that was the mentality. And I'm not saying that to mock a religion, but what I'm saying is to bring the connection between what was going on during this time, that the mentality of these people was, was so bound up into what they believed to see what a God was, that they were missing the spiritual part of what God wanted to do in their lives. You see, when you serve God, there's a, there's a spiritual element that overtakes the physical part. See, we serve God by faith not by sight. We can't serve God by sight. Because we serve God by sight, we ain't going to see nothing. But, the analogy is simple. Jesus says, you, 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 
You feel the wind. You don't see it. But yet you know it's there. Mm -hmm. You don't know what direction it's coming from, but you know that the wind, when it's blowing, it, it, you know it's there. Now, I always know when the wind's blowing because it messes up my hair. Yeah, always messes up my hair. <laughs> I don't like it. A lot of static, right? Yeah, it's a lot of, yeah, a lot of static in my hair. It's like come out with pow like that. You, know? <laughs> you see, I don't need to see the wind to know the wind exists. Would you imagine, though, we, right here where we live, there, it's windy. It's windy a lot. Now, the wind comes through. Could you imagine if you've seen the wind where we live? If you've seen the wind, that means there's a flying object in, in the sky. <laughs> you better duck. <laughs> it's not going to be very safe. So we don't need to see the wind to know the wind exists, right? So we'll serve God. We don't need to see God to know God exists because when God enters into our hearts, our lives change. Yes, amen. Our lives change. There's been some really messed up hardened criminals whose lives have changed. Mm -hmm. Not because of some program or some 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 step program or some some book they read or some pamphlet they went to or some weekend weekend thing or a month long uh, 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 event that they went to that you know it's 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 the power of the spirit of God that enters into your life. It changes it can it, the spirit of God just convinces your heart that hey this is this is wrong. I need to go here now. Yes. This is right. You need to do this now. But I'm used to this. No, no, no. Yeah, but you're coming here, and that's what they were. That's what they were missing. They just totally skipped away from God because they they were too busy looking at the physical. And that's what's important. We got to remember. That's why we serve God. That's why we go to church is because there's going to be a spiritual element of our conversion that's going to take place. That's why it's important to even come to church. Not just watch online to actually get into the buildings because what happens is is the spiritual conversion. Bible says, "Two or three gather my name. I am the midst. I am in the midst." When you get people together worshiping God and praising God, there's there's an undeniable spirit that 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 falls upon the place that changes lives. It changes hearts. That's right. That's right. And that's what these people were missing. They still wanted to bring a sacrifice to a physical person that they that they wanted to call God at this time. Amen. Any questions? Any input? Okay, verse 19. So all that's going on, the multitude's trying to bring sacrifices to them. They're not listening to them. And they're just saying, you know what? I don't know. We're going to have to get out of here. Verse 19. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came, came there. And having persuaded the multitudes, listen to this. Paul is just giving the word of God. It says, having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. You imagine all he was doing was giving the gospel of Jesus, trying to bring the spiritual spirituality to people. They were so focused on the physical that they killed the man of God. They were trying to kill the man of God. They were trying to physically destroy the man of God. The one whom, in whom they were trying to bring a sacrifice to, they are now bringing stones to. So it says that they got him, they stoned him, they dragged him out of the city, because they and they, they left him there, they thought he was dead. Verse 20. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went, in, and went into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. They couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. And remember, Stephen gets stoned, and, and, and Paul's there, or Saul's there, he's watching, and they, they, they stone him to death. They're stoning, they're stoning Paul now, and, and he didn't die. He's, he's not dead. They brought him out. He was lifeless. He was just probably just laying there, so they all thought he was dead. They probably didn't have the idea to check for a pulse at that time, but, they, but he was dead. They thought he was dead until the disciples came. He rose up, and he just went about his business again. Now, The Bible says that the devil comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Could you imagine how disheartening this could be to a person? 
All you're trying to do is bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to strangers, because that's what these people were to him. He went to a new city and began to speak about Jesus, and and they and they go, they come against them, they stone him, and they leave him for dead. Think about that. They leave him for dead. They leave him for dead. The pandemic has done that to the church. Mm -hmm. It leaves the church for dead. Where the church struggles. Where people used to come to church for the spirituality, but now they just look at it from a distance and say, that must be God. Mm. And they leave it for dead. Well, but I didn't throw stones at it. Well, at least, at least these people came to, to, to Paul to finish it off. See, it's important to serve God. Can you imagine the disheartening feeling that Paul must have had? That he's just bringing the gospel, something that he found to be true, that he knows is real now. He, he's seen Jesus Christ in the flesh, even after the crucifixion, and he was resurrected. He sees him, and he converts into Christianity. And he just wants to just share what God has put into his heart. He just wants to just share it with these people. And they want to accept it. They just want to kill him. See, telling somebody about Jesus is not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be accepted either. There's people in your life that, that need Jesus. They really need God in their life. They need a transformation. They need a conversion like, like Saul to Paul. They need, they need to be changed. Yes. But when they reject us, do we get left in the street like, like, like Paul did and look like we're dead? Or do we do like Paul did when the apostles showed up and get back up mm -hmm. and go to the next city? There's people in your life that need Jesus. But they're not going to get them when we stay knocked down. See, these people were, were so bound by religion and what they believed to be true mm -hmm. that they were missing the actual move of God. They thought they were in it because they were bound by what their tradition was. And it's not any one, not coming, not coming against any, any one religion or anything like that. I'm not coming against religion at all. But what I'm saying is they're caught up in tradition. Tradition. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, you can call me whatever you want. All I know is I'm serving Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm you can, you, can you can label a religion anything you want to label it. I don't care. I'm not a religious person. I'm the first person to say that. I'm not a religious person. What do you mean you're not a religious person? We go to church all the time. Yeah, but I don't do things out of routine or tradition. I do things because I'm serving God. Yes. I have a relationship. Amen. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Any any uh, questions? Any input? Anybody want to add anything to that? Anybody want to take me outside and stone me? Mm -hmm. Not you, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard her calling you Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, verse 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. You imagine they're saying this with such faith. We, we must through many tribulations we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. It means in order, we're going to get to the kingdom of God, but it's going to take a lot of battles for us to get there. That's right. We're going to get knocked down, beat down, dragged out. But you know what? We're going to keep fighting is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. We will fight and fight through all the tribulations to get and enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, that's right. Amen. How powerful was that? Mm -hmm. You ever not want to serve God? Amen. We're real. I mean, there's times in our lives where it's like, okay, God, enough. What more do you want me to take? We just want to go into a cave and hide and say, forget it, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm done, leave me alone. In verse 20, so when they had appointed elders in the church, in every church, and prayed with and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. 
Now when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. What I get out of chapter 14, book of Acts chapter 14, is serving God isn't always going to be a bed of roses. People are going to come against you. People, people that you give your heart to. Paul and, and Barnabas, they're giving their heart to these people. You're going to give your heart to people. And I, I can attest to this. I've given my heart to people. You know, just, just, just over a year ago, our biggest concern was moving because we, we didn't think we are going to make it through the year fitting in here. And then we come to, to today and things have changed. But make no mistake, all those people who are here, I gave my heart to these people. So we're going to give our heart to people. And we're going to give it to them. Some of them are going to hang on to that heart and treasure it. And think it's the most precious thing in the world that they've ever received. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to think it's worthless and useless and throw it on the ground and step all over and pretend it never existed. But the important thing, what I get out of this entire chapter is what Paul says. That we're going to go through tribulation to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Things aren't always going to be easy. Finances aren't always going to be there. I know that. I know that. Personal and through the church. Finances haven't always, haven't always been there. And tribulation is going to come. Uncertainty will, will, will lie. Where well, you're not going to know that it, what, the, what tomorrow holds. We had some uncertainty even in our ministry. And, and the uncertainty sometimes leaves you a little, little unsettled. Well, how am I going to do this? I need, I need certainty. You know, people who are, are businessmen, they come in to do ministry like in, in, the, in the manner in which we do our fellowship. It kind of, it's kind of mind boggling because they're used to, you know, the business aspect of it, the, the three, five, ten year plan, uh, the finances, and the profit margins. And then you get into a church like ours and you're like, man, this is living by faith. But Paul says, we're going to go through some tribulation to make it to heaven. Don't worry, we're going to go through some tribulation. But we're going to go through that, those tribulations, so we can get to heaven. So heaven can be our home. Yes, that's right. We're not going to miss it. We're not going to miss heaven as being our home. We're going to get there by sticking through the tribulation. By knowing that no matter what happens, they can try to kill me if they want. It don't matter. I'm still going to serve God. Amen. So tonight, I hope this helped you tonight. Anybody got any questions, any input they want to add before we close? Amen. We have uh, Acts chapter 15 for next Wednesday, uh, for two Wednesdays from now. Next Wednesday we will be in Bible conference. Yes, and when yes. we come back, we'll be excited and we'll continue chapter 15. But you know what? Um, you come, you be a part of it. If you haven't seen all, if you haven't seen or heard all the, all the Bible studies throughout the book of Acts, go back to our YouTube channel. Uh, search for us at uh, New Destiny Drupal Valley and you'll find us and uh, subscribe and uh, and look at the look at the, the Bible studies we have we have we have a few of the different books that we've gone through already look through them it's good inspiring good word of God I'm always trying to bring the gospel of, of bringing salvation so you know what if, 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 if that's where you that's where you uh, you lack amen come and listen to it and, and get built up and watch God use your life amen Read chapter 15 before we return. Write down your questions and put them on the screen. Whatever it is it takes to be a part of what we're doing and allow God to use your life. Remember, we're going to go through some things, but we're going to still make the kingdom of heaven our home. Amen. Amen. So let's bow our hearts. Amen. As we close in prayer. Come on, Father, we thank you, God, tonight, God, for your word. We thank you, God. God, even through in tribulation, God, that you're still on the throne, God. God, and if this tribulation we go through, that's okay, God, because we'll still love you, God. God, and I pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you give us the strength, God, to carry on. 
You give us the strength, God, to reach the lost. You give us the words, God. God, you give us the compassion, God, and the heart, God, to continue, God. We thank you for all that you're doing, God, in this place and in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.